so here I will try to go a little bit more into a few, a few things in the motor control workbench. So this is the, the fifth step of our six step uh, approach, let's say. So it's motor, motor drive uh, tuning. Tasks of our lab number five, actually, or four, would, I would say. We will look about a little bit more detail into the monitor. So how you can set the, the speed from the monitor, how you can view the speed from the monitor. Uh, some debug fe features, how FOC uh, starts and a little bit about the tuning. So first detailed description of the motor control uh, monitor. You can follow me basically here if you want. So the previous project which we created with uh, True Studio. So you can run the True Studio or you can go out of the bug because the software is already on the microcontroller. And please open the uh, workbench uh, monitor. So when you open the, the project in the workbench, you basically see this and there is a button to open the, the monitor. This is how it looks like. If we have it, then the next step is to connect to the board. So please choose your COM port and 115.200 uh, for the board rate and click on this wall adapter to connect the board to the board. If you are successfully connected, you should see here with the green one firmware and the firmware version currently running on the motor, uh, on the microcontroller. And if you're success, if you see this green, you can start playing with these commands. So, on the left side, you see this green, uh, the green, let's say LED, with the the red one. We are now in the idle state, so the board is waiting for our inputs either by pressing the button or by clicking here on the start button on the right side. There is a button called start motor. Sorry, start motor, not start button. These indicators on top, they're showing us current bus voltage and the current motor power. Uh, and the below one, so the, the biggest one, is showing current motor speed, which is actually measured with the hardware, not the one which is set. We can set the, the desired speed uh, with this bubble on the, right, on the right side, which is in my case set to 750 RPM. So set some, some desired speed and then start the motor. And you should see motor spinning. If you try to manually stop it with your hand, you should see the error on the, on the left side. There should be a fault. One of them should be indicating with, I think, red color. And while the motor is spinning, you can change the speed with this knob. But if you will try to, ch to change the direction, you have to stop it, then change, and then start again. This is the basic, the basic view, you can play a little bit. Uh, there is also uh, temperature information if the board would have a feedback for the temperature, which is in, in this case, I think there is no feedback. So it's, uh, it's either zero or some dummy value. In case of an error, so if you try to spin the motor and you manually press it to, let's say, make an error, you should see on the, on the left top side, there is a marking with fault now and uh, red LED. The error says under voltage, so our voltage was too low because the, the current is current is not uh, there is no feedback about current on the tool. When the when the fault uh, let's say occurs, you have to stop the motor, press the buttons for stop the motor, and then acknowledge the fault. Okay, let's continue. The next the next very useful feature is the plotter. Uh, there is an icon in the in the main view. You have this icon on top, you can uh, open up the plotter and the plotter will show you the difference between desired speed and actual speed. The red one is desired and the blue one, uh, white one is the actual. So you can see, you can see the difference because as we already mentioned, it's a little bit hard to debug application like motor control because you need continuous calculation in the interrupts. You can open the plotter in the separate window, which actually is always, and you can play with, with the knob a little bit and you will see the, the red curve is changing the altitude. Okay, so this is, this is basically it. You can play with the knob and see, and see the values between desired and actual, and actual speed. If we go back to the monitor view, and in the advanced section, if you remember, Roman explained earlier, we have option to, to set the control mode as a speed or, or torque. So here in the drop down, we can choose either we want fixed speed or only fixed torque. In both cases, torque regulation is always active, but on top of that, we can also have a speed one. In the middle red rectangle, here you can see the, 
you can configure the speed ramp so basically what you can uh, set is the target speed and how fast from the current one this change should happen in, uh, in this case it is set to 1000 millisecond from the current one go to minus two, 2000 rpm so it depends on what is the current one the slope is is different in the register section so register uh, register step you can see the current values uh, which are in the system so all the all possible variables physically presented on the board are seen here so let, let's continue with a little bit of overview for of the uh, debug features i will go very fast through that so the first the first feature which we offer is the plotter here you can check in case of control regula regulation you have a current speed versus desired speed in case of torque regulation you have desired torque versus current torque so that's that's the catch with with the plotter the second very useful feature is dac output so digital to analog uh, converter output again why do we have this because you cannot break point the system to stop it because your motor will i mean the foc algorithm needs continuous processing we offer two outputs on uh, basically on pin pa4 and pa5 of course if you don't need this we can disable there is an option to disable the the feature and we can ch uh, select which output do we want on the dac so which uh, value we want to see on the dac dac output what are the options so this is the case how it looks like the green one a little bit thick is the actual phase a motor current measured with oscilloscope this is the green one and then the the small uh, smallest one below are the deck channel uh, one and deck channel two with ia and ib ib values for the motor this is the case number one the case number two we have again phase a motor current in the green but below we have uh, back emf obs observation for alpha and beta so different values for the for the same motor current so we can decide what we want to plot with the dac output about the tuning flow we were just discovering something now here about the, the tuning flow the basic startup with the foc algorithm offers let's say three three values the first one is alignment so we can before we start applying any speed we can align our motor this is basically speed equals zero and we are applying the current to the one or two uh, or two phases this is the the green part usually the maximum current we should put here is up to nominal current usually half of that is enough but in some cases depends on the load or on the motor we can apply up to one so 100 percent of nominal current step number one is to apply the speed with almost uh, steady current in this case this is the open loop approach we try to observe the back emf and then here is the third third value when we have the back emf observation let's say valid one and then we switch to the closed loop this is the basic what happens behind behind the foc uh, startup so are we able now to find this uh, this view if so there is an option to have basic settings view before or there is also an option to have advanced settings in advanced settings we can manually by hand specify the startup procedure for example in this case here is specified that on the beginning for one second we want zero speed and 1.5 amps of current basically it means align my motor in the second phase we want to apply in duration of 1.17 seconds speed of 588 rpms and after that we will stay at 588 rpms with the foc foc algorithm if you want more let's say change the speed after 10 seconds we can use more of them more lines more rows of these settings this is the idea and you can also specify when to execute sensorless algorithm at which point so in the first step when we want to align our motor we don't need sensorless algorithm because it, there is no point to do it starting from two we want to apply some speed and we want to read what is happening in the in the feedback so this is what i explained uh, the duration values just for your information they are let's say cumulative so uh, 1.176 means after first one second so you have to sum all of them before and then you start with your value uh, speed is always absolute value 
So basically, if you were, if you are at zero, then 5a8, then minus 20, uh, 200, basically it would mean go to the opposite direction, not only slow down for 200 RPM. In the RPM, here is also information. When do we switch from open loop to closed loop? What should be the speed when we decide, okay, now it's safe to go to, to closed loop and control the motor with closed loop. This is the monitor, which we all already saw. So how it behaves from this view to this view. The, the limit, how many rows you have is today set to five. So up to five different points for your startup procedure. You cannot have them unlimited. Maybe in the future, we will, uh, we will add this feature as well. So the tuning flow of, of the regulators, of course, we can change them here, but it's also possible to change them in the C code directly. So this tool is not uh, always mandatory. We can change the current regulator. We can change the observer and its regulator, so PLL variables and uh, constants. And we can also change, of course, speed regulator, uh, KP and KI parameters.